Okay, hello friends and internet strangers that someday may be friends. I'm here at the easel tonight and trying to get a painting in here uh, before these vaccination side effects kick in. I am fully vaccinated as of today. So I've got a 12 by 12 canvas again. This is kind of becoming a, a good teaching size, a good demo size, I guess. And I've got liquid clear on it. I didn't put a lot down here. You can probably see it's kind of dry. Uh, but pretty much the whole canvas. And then I've got colors on here. We're just going to have some fun with this one. This is going to be a, a wild looking scene for a little bit. But hold on, it may get better. So let's get right into it. Let's see. Adjust this camera just a little bit. Make you guys dizzy. There we go. And sorry for the glare. These black canvases are great once you get the white on here. But... They look awful until that point. So let's see if we can hurry up and get there. I'm going to take some white and I'm going to start bringing some of this color out. And I'm just going to do little circles like this. There, look at that. There it comes. Oh my. This is actually looking really good already. You can do the little X strokes, you can do the little circles that I was doing. And you can see there's nothing down here. It's just, this is meant to be a Bob Ross style wet on wet take on a Milky Way scene. I've done this before. I've taught this down at the uh, Bob Ross workshop. This is kind of an idea that Nick Hankins kind of originated. I always give him credit for teaching me how to, to look at this scene. And it's just uh, uh, yellows and crimson and phthalo greens and some, uh, I, I just used Prussian blue. I didn't have any phthalo blue close by, but that's all I'm using. And you got to be careful because, well, you know, your blues and your yellows, don't bring your blue back down into your yellow. Or you'll, you'll just have green. So you want to save some of that yellow. I want to put a little bit all over the sky. Just kind of random little circles. And you can... We're going to do another step here that will bring it out even more. So that should be good for the first step. But you can already see much nicer colors. And let's see if this will help now. Eh. I don't think so. All right. So now I'm going to find my fan brush that I brought back here. And this is where the fun part comes in. I always like doing this step next. And you can do this. However you want. I use the fan. You could use a filbert. You just, it's kind of weird that I'm not using a filbert, right? But I'm going to start thinking about... The Milky Way has almost two sides to it. And again, this is kind of an artist representation of it. So I don't need any astron astronomers coming and telling me it's not right. It's just kind of what I see. And it just kind of comes out of those... Almost like that. Somewhat like that, right? And when you reload that fan brush, make sure you're still in your yellow part because if you're not, you're going to bring your yellow up into your blue and then you're going to get all green. And it may look great all green. Who knows? Do it. And you can be very careful with this or you can just run at it kind of crazy. Just twirl on that brush. And when I'm, I'm thinking this is kind of angled like this. So the Milky Way is kind of going like... Like that. And again, this is not meant to be a photo representation. It's an artist representation of what I see. Um, and also, again, what kind of Nick, my buddy Nick taught me a long time ago. And I've taken this, turned it flipped. I've taken this idea and turned it into so many paintings. That people have really liked the classes, you know. I think we all like to think or to kind of look at space scenes and wonder what's out there. Yeah, something like that for the first go. And then I'll find hmm, I'll find my two inch brush. Let me see if this light's gonna help. Now, maybe. Now you can see it. There we go. Now I can see it too. Perfect. Well, it's getting bright carefully. This first go, I'm just going to knock back down in. 
And anything you don't like, you can set down in real easy. This could also just be some kind of nebula. And, you know, it doesn't have to be the Milky Way. Do the same thing, same technique. And then I'm not caring too much if these colors mix together. I just don't want to lose all my nice bright yellow towards the horizon. Because if you think about these little scenes, it's, it's kind of like a time-lapse photo. And that's kind of what the Nick based the idea on. And you may want to clean your brush if you do this again. I'm not going to, just because I'm lazy. There, I'm just putting in some brighter spots here. There's some, some cool looking little things happening up in here. Leave some of these little dark areas where you don't really know what's happening in there. That makes it look really nice. Super nice, actually. So don't cover those. Not everywhere needs every every little bit of paint you've got on your brush. There we go. And let's just, you can maybe even easier, if you control it like this, you can kind of do this. Oh, put too much right there. Shoot. Happy accident time. It just kind of wails out through there. Again, I'm trying to think of it going like that. I'm actually really liking this. I'm waiting for I'm waiting for me to really mess it up here. I may have already. I just can't see it. That's a little too bright there. We'll knock it down here just in a second. Just whatever you think. Right through there. And we'll connect those two. Make a little pocket right there. Again, not necessarily an accurate representation, but a representation nonetheless, right? But just look at these pretty colors. And again, this is super painting just to do something wild and crazy. All right, that's it. Now I'll just knock some of these down that I don't like, like that one. Like that one. Look at that, look at that. Oh, just uh, two hairs and some air. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say some Bob sayings here. Literally two hairs and some air. And I'll show you how I can fix a little bit of this because I don't, that's too bright for me. I like it bright towards the horizon, which is here, but not everywhere. Okay. So we've got some too much white there. It just, it doesn't look right. I've got a brush with, I used to put the blue on. I can actually go back in there and kind of clean that up a little bit. Cover it back up a little bit, soften it down. Yeah, there we go. Getting it back. Getting it back. Deposit some darker areas up in here. Maybe mix some blue, some green. No yellow, though. we will mix yellow. You're regretting the yellow. Right there. And then what I would do is lightly bring a little bit of this up. Because I, I used too much white there. I'm going to blame it on the COVID vaccine, okay? There we go. And don't lose it again. About ready to lose it again. Something like that. There we go. I really love the horizon area down in here. It's cool. Cool, cool, cool looking. There we go. That'll be fun. Once we put the next step on it, you'll, you'll see. It won't matter. All right. Let's really make it spacey. All right. Next step. I had to pause there and go get my thinner nugget, which I just cleaned. So it's actually really nice. Doesn't smell. Mm, well, it smells a little bit. Uh. I had forgotten to clean my thinners. It's probably been two months, and that's the longest I've ever gone without cleaning my thinner buckets. Really important thing to keep your thinner nice and fresh. Keeps your brushes looking better too. Of course, I've got four buckets, so a couple of them weren't too dirty. 
I'm just taking some paint thinner here and adding it to a touch of titanium white. And I'm loosening it up. And then I'll have to test it here. I'll have to grab me a knife. Somewhere I got a knife laying here that's not too dirty. I don't think it's going to be thin enough. It's not. Alright. A little more. Get a little more thinner. Now you do want to be careful here. You don't want to add too much thinner to where you start getting those little pops and fizzles on the canvas from the liquid clear and the, and the thinner's reaction to it. There we go. Perfect. Everywhere. Get some stars. My wall. The canvas. Most of your stars are concentrated up in these darker areas. Oh, but you can throw them to your heart's content. And I'm holding that knife kind of steady and just raking my brush across it. And that really works nice. Some people use a toothbrush for this step. Uh, you probably can't see those on the on the video. Sometimes what I do, I'll show you another little cool trick. They look awful. I may mess my whole painting up here. I put a little yellow in my stars there. Or blue, green, whatever you want. But there should be thousands, millions of stars up here in the sky. There. A cluster of them there. Cover our thinner bucket up again, even though it's clean. You don't want to leave your thinner bucket uncovered. So, this is meant to be a super easy painting. And let's see what the light does here. Yeah, that light makes it a little better. It's going to be next step. We've got one step left. If you guys are tuning in for a really long video, and I'll be here long tonight. Unless this goes really bad. And I was going to use a fan brush for this step, but I'll just use my old trusty silver here because I've got one clean sitting next to me. I'll tell you one thing you can do. If you're ever trying to make like a ton of trees, take a one inch brush, two inch brush and do this. Sorry for the noise. Smack on the dark. Reload up a little bit more here. And you got a base for your trees. You don't have to worry about painting the bottom of them. You just kind of go at it here. I'll show you what I mean. Oh, got a hair. Grab the hair off here. Yeah, let's put one right here. And then I just paint a tree. And you can throw extra down here. It doesn't really look like a tree yet. <laughs> let's bring it up a tad bit higher. There we go. That'll work a little better. There we go. One little tree reaching for the Milky Way. And really, I didn't want one that high. There we go. Another one. And honestly, I would probably use a fan brush for this step. I know people probably think I've given up on the fan. I haven't. We're just, you know, taking a break, taking it slow. And the fan brush will actually paint these a lot quicker. So, maybe use the fan. Alright. I want this to kind of go like this. And I don't know why I need to make that noise, but it helps. Kick it, kick it over, kick that fan, kick that filbert, whatever. 
you're using over and as I start to feel feverish sitting here I'm glad this was a short video of course we're not done yet are we really this is it this is the last step <laughs> there's no no uh, hidden surprises no su secret ingredients tonight was it meant to be a big painting Just a bunch of trees and a sky. With your sky being the star of the show. There. There we go. Yeah, I might want one. Sneak one right in over here. A little taller even. There we go. And because it's next to this one. I don't even have to paint it. As long as I get the top on there. See that? And you notice my horizon is. Look, look how little of the canvas I have left. So I'm just filling some of this up to make it push that sky back a little bit. But really on a scene like this, this is this star. Like if you were doing the northern lights, you wouldn't paint the northern lights and then put a mountain above them to where you could barely see that much of them. At least I wouldn't. You shouldn't either, in my opinion. You know what they say about people with opinions. Let's just lay all our trees out. That'll help me kind of paint them too. So I'm going to drop down there, but I might come back up just a little bit on the next one. And I said I was going to lay them all out, but I'm not. You're just going to see the tops of these for the most part. Just an indication of some trees down here having a party. Did you know that trees party? My videos are turning into apparently Secret Life of Trees or something. There we go. And again, you could probably grab your fan brush and do these in in such a small amount of time is what I'm spending here. I'm gonna look at that. So we'll still have a quick video. Just some indications of some trees. These do not get any highlights. Remember they're backlit, or I guess the lights in front. Jumping around here on the canvas. Just kind of thinking where we might see some of these guys. I'm loving this 12 by 12 canvas for quick demos or, or even just paintings. I mean, it's a pretty, it's a pretty size, I think. A square canvas. A square canvas is no, it's nice. I don't know if the square canvas is going anywhere. Put one there. Oh, that's too thick. I'm not following the long rule. Get a thin line on these, don't push. Put one there. There we go. I kind of don't like the placement of my middle tree, but I'm not going to worry with it. I'm going to actually pull some trees out of here with a knife, too, at the end. We'll call this one Stargazer or something. I'm horrible at naming my paintings. I don't know what to call them. I know some people just number them. That doesn't seem appropriate. Come up with some kind of crazy name. I usually do. But your painting, you can do what you want. I've got a little fat on me. Got one on a diet.
stray hairs on this brush, all kinds of things going on here. I may look at this video tomorrow and say, I don't know what I'm doing. That's very possible. Like I said, I'm feeling a little feverish here. Let's just go ahead and use that one. I didn't like the thickness of that one, but I love to hear that brush hit the canvas. That's the best sound in the world. Now, let's see if we can do something here, make it easier on us. Clean my mouth off. Ooh, I still had some yellow on there from the stars. There's what I wanted to do. Get rid of that yellow. One thing I don't like about these canvases is you may be able to see. Um, they're kind of loose. These are Sunbelt canvases, my favorite canvas to buy. As far as I know, that I don't know where they sell them in stores. You can order them directly from Sunbelt. The shipping will get you, but they're nice canvases. Sometimes they're stretched a little too loose, though. Which I have used, you know, I get used to that. It's not a big deal. Alright, there's one. We're just putting a little finer point on some of these, you know, and dragging up some that are behind there that you're not going to see. Try not to be too perfect. It's hard for me not to be perfect. And I kid about that. I'm barely adequate at anything. So perfection eludes me. But I do tinker a lot with my paintings. And that's not a good thing. There, see that? And I think that's what I want right there, guys. I do have a strip liner here that I may grab real quick. Let's see what time we got on the video. 22 minutes. That's not bad. I mean, it's not 18 to 24 like Bob, but we'll be done in just a couple of seconds. I've been really enjoying just throwing. Let's see if this script liner is going to work for me. Yeah, just throwing some little things in here like this. That's more paint there. And these script liners wear out really quick, by the way. So if you have one that's not been working for you, get you a new one. Um, that could be the problem. They're not meant to last forever. I mean, look at the look at the bristles on it. It's not not a two inch brush here. And I just throw in little details on these trees, something like that. And if I had to paint this one over, I'd do it with a fan brush. Because on this small of a canvas, it's really hard to get a nice trunk on these without it getting too thick with that filbert. But we don't care. And I think that's what I want. Now, we'll do one thing. You're, you knew that was coming. You knew I wasn't done. One of these needs to be raised up. This one. Just so it has a nicer angle down into that painting. See that? Just been raising that one up. I think those are fun. I don't like them being so straight. <coughs> but I think it's okay. We could put some kind of big tree swooping in here. But I think... For tonight, that's pretty dang good. Actually, I like this painting. Super easy. Sky and trees. Remember, don't always try to have 18 elements in a painting. Have a few that are just fun. Oh, there's a dead one there. I think there's a dead one right there. Maybe there's one there. I don't have my paint thin enough, but 
over here. There we go. Okay, let's sign it. Let's sign it and call it done. Oh, do 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 do. Forgive me, Bob. Oh, that's not thin enough. I got some white and some phthalo green here. I think that's what I'm going to use this on. Kind of like when you can barely see your name, too. It's there, but it's not. May not be there. There we go. Step back and look at it. And I really like it. So I hope you guys like it. If you do, give it a like. If you haven't subscribed, give it a su subscribe. Hit that subscribe button for me. And Share it. Ask people to come and watch this crazy guy paint. And I'll keep painting, putting these videos out. But try this one. This is fun. Play with colors in the sky. Um, you know, the stars. It's just, it's a fun painting. Easy painting if you don't worry about your color. Look, I've got green in my yellow. I've got red in here, crimson. I've got green up here. I've got some blue seeping down into my yellow. That's what normally happens in the sky. You don't see yellow, red, green, blue. They have to mix a little bit to make it look realistic or somewhat realistic. So there you go, guys. I will see you soon. We'll do another video this week at some point. And we may even try to do a live. So we'll see how that goes and see how I feel. But everybody stay well, be well, and be kind to each other. Please take care, and I'll see you down the road.